Well, I've got my little wireless access point all set up and running here. I've got two different SSIDs running, one for the 2.4, and that's going to be for backward compatibility with some old G stuff or maybe some N stuff. And I'm also running a 5 gigahertz SSID, and that's going to be mainly for 802.11ac. So this is only half the battle. The other half is setting up your wireless clients. So what I want to do here is I'm going to do this twice. First of all, I'm going to do it, I'm going to use a laptop because desktops and laptops pretty much configure the exact same way. And then we're going to do it again on a smartphone. So before we do either of those though, let's make sure we know what we have set up here. So what I've got here is on the 2.4 gigahertz band, I've got an SSID called Mic24 and it's set up to WPA2 personal and the password is total total. On the five gigahertz side, I've got an SSID called Mike 50 and again WPA2 with the same password. So the first thing we need to verify is, can our wireless clients even see these SSIDs? Well, every operating system has built in scanners in essence that will go out and take a look at the wireless SSIDs and show you what's available. I'm gonna do this first with Windows 10 on my laptop here. Now the first thing I want to do since I'm on this laptop is show you a couple of other things. First of all, make sure that you don't have a disabled network card. I can disable almost anything I want just by coming into my network connections, right clicking and click disable. Now that's different than say, for example, airplane mode. On this laptop, I can press a couple of buttons and I go into airplane mode. With airplane mode, that means everything wireless is shut off. So I'm going to unclick airplane mode. Also keep in mind, it's not this true on this laptop, but a lot of laptops will have a separate turn off the wireless button. So A plus loves to have questions like that why you can't get on a wireless network. All right, so anyway, everything looks copacetic. Okay, so now that I know my wireless card is enabled and not turned off for any reason, I'm just gonna click on this little icon right here. Yeah, you'll notice I see my little radars and then an asterisk that means the wireless is working but I'm not connected to anybody. And we go through here, we see lots and lots of wireless networks. These are usually listed by strength from top to bottom. And here are my two wireless networks. Now I can connect to the 2.4 gigahertz, but why? I'm 802.11ac, so I'm gonna connect always to five gigahertz when possible. And it's gonna say connect automatically. We're gonna leave that on for the moment. So I'm gonna hit connect. So I've gone ahead and typed in the password. You can actually click on that to verify you typed in the password, right? And it's also offering if I want to, it's saying if you want to, you can use WPS at this point. I don't want to, so we're just going to hit next. And you can see that I'm now connected. So it's pretty easy to connect to an SSID as long as you know what the shared key is. And it's designed to be pretty easy and works well. The only problem we have at this point is that, notice I said checked, stay connected. What's happened here is I've created a profile. A profile is going to remember this network and that can sometimes cause issues. First of all, let's see how many profiles I have on this laptop. I'll give you a clue, I travel with this a lot. So for me, the best way to get to that is I'm just gonna go into settings I'm going to go into my network and I'm going to go into Wi-Fi. Now, right here it says show available networks. That's the same thing I would be seeing in the lower right hand corner, but I want to manage known networks. So here are all the stored profiles on this computer. Yep, hotels all over the country are in here. Profiles can be convenient because Windows by default will, if you want it to, will automatically connect to known profiles without you having to do anything. The downside is, is if these profiles change. For example, if I were to go ahead and change the Mic 5.0 from WPA2 to WPA, or heaven forbid change the password, I would be getting errors at this point. So anytime I try to connect to a network that I've connected to before and I'm unsuccessful, the first thing I'm gonna do is forget the network. Let me show you how to do that.
So to forget something, all I want to do is right click on it and click on forget. If I just want to unhook, I can hit that or I can press the button. But to forget it, and it is now completely gone. If I want to connect to this again, I'm going to have to re-enter the password. So profiles are fantastic and they work beautifully and they make our lives convenient. Every time I come back in my house, my smartphone is automatically on the network. But keep in mind is that if you have a problem with an existing network, it's probably a bad profile. Delete the profile and log back in. Man, we're knocking out wireless troubleshooting issues left and right here, aren't we? All right, well, that was fun. But this time, I want to do it one more time. Let me grab my iPhone and let's connect into a wireless network using a smart device. All smart devices pretty much work the same way. I'm going to just use an iPhone because I like iPhones. Keep in mind that smart devices have airplane modes just like anything else, so you want to make sure that that's turned off. So what I'm going to do is choose my Wi-Fi. Now right now I'm currently connected to this thing called Total Wi-Fi, but you can see that there's mic 24 and mic 50. So I'm going to just connect to this guy. See if I actually typed it in right. Yay, and I'm now connected. So if I want to get out of this particular network, I can just click on forget, or I can also just turn off auto join. So the auto join is basically, he'll keep the profile, but he won't automatically join it. And forget just makes you forget the whole thing. And it's gone. So connecting your wireless client to an SSID is usually a pretty easy thing, but there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, most wireless clients the NIC is configured as a DHCP client. So on some networks, you can actually try to connect and it'll say you're connected, but you're gonna get an APIPA address, a 169.254. That can be a clue that you have a bad password, although most modern operating systems will say something like, I can't connect to this network. But do keep in mind, the CompTIA A plus does tend to ask questions like that. The other thing to remember is that these things can change in terms of passwords. And if something went in before and you couldn't get in, just go ahead and forget that profile. And last, and this is an important one, and people forget this, you can easily set a wireless NIC to a static IP address. You don't have to use DHCP. It's rare and it's weird, but it is a perfectly functional NIC. Now, of course, you have to know what the network ID and you're going to have to manually type in your default gateway and your subnet mask and your DNS, but you can configure a wireless device completely statically, just like you would something like a file server or something like that. Watch out for questions that try to trick you on something very basic like that. It looks like a wireless issue, but it's really an IP configuration issue.